What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV. It's finished here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Tottenham 2, Burnley 1 and finally Spurs are back to winning ways. It wasn't a vintage performance by any stretch of the imagination but at least we got three points back on the board after the four games we've had to endure in the last uh, four or five weeks. Yeah look, con considering this is like a game that we had to get back on track on the uh, home to a, a relegation, now relegated Burnley side. Um, it was crucial that we got back to winning ways. We didn't let this run um, go into a bit of a disaster, which would have been if we didn't drop points today. So still the European place today with, look, a decent performance. I wouldn't go and say we were electric or we were brilliant, but got the job done. I think we, just, we probably did enough to win the game at the end of the day. Albeit, I think there's a classic Tottenham performance this season, especially at home against um, bottom half teams, where first half, you know, a bit too open, a bit lackluster in the forward line. Um, Decky, I thought, on the left-hand side, didn't look so great today. Uh, I thought we looked a lot better when he moved over to the right-hand side. He looked really um, uncomfortable on the left, didn't he? Like, yeah, really uncomfortable. He, he didn't know what he was doing on that left-hand side, I felt. And um, so, yeah, first half, it, was, it wasn't great. And we went in level. Obviously, Pedro Porro got a goal to get us back in the game in that first half with a battering shot across the face, um, into the near post, sorry. I thought in that first half, it was just... Again, very loud. So Burnley could, should have and could have easily been winning at half time, but we um, dust ourselves down. We controlled the game in that second half, and I thought deservedly won the game. Yeah, I mean, the notable chance for Burnley in that first half was obviously the goal that they scored. You know, Brennan Johnson gets bypassed easily, Pedro Porro gets bypassed easily, and then one straight ball down the middle, and they're through on goal. It's absolutely shameful defending. Um, and then obviously uh, Bicario makes a say from point blank rage I need to see it again but it looked like a worldy of a save really, right in the first from, minute a couple yeah, of minutes from where I was sitting and I mean the forward line was just flattering to deceive time and time again every cross whenever we did get it wide every cross was just terrible like either too high or went out for a goal kick I mean defended. really bad really bad quality on the crosses and I felt like it took for our centre backs like it has done for the for the last four or five weeks, whenever we look dangerous, our centre backs have been the ones um, causing the problems, and it happened again today with Mickey Van de Ven. Our defenders have and been, Romero. Our defenders have been our biggest weapons going forward in the past few weeks, to be honest. And we even saw against Forest, right? We were one 0 down, and Van de Ven and Porro had to score and bail us out against um, Arsenal. Romero was the one who, yeah. uh, apart from the some penalty, Romero hit the post and whatever, and we had all those chances. And today was the same thing. Um, 1-0 down and Porro and Van der Ven had to bail us out with moments of quality. I would have to say Van der Ven, his goal was taken like a seasoned winger who we signed for 60 million the way he took it, cutting inside, moving onto his left foot and curling it into the bottom corner with finesse and composure. Yeah, sure. Um, absolutely ph phenomenal from uh, Mickey Van der Ven and um, I thought he, uh, he was brilliant defensively yet again. Obviously, he was named player of the, player of the year. Was he man of the match uh, for you today? I think probably. I, think it was, I thought it was great when he moved over to left back as well. And I thought, um, obviously, his goal was uh, when, he, when he was a left back. Brilliantly taken goal. I don't know how he curls it in from where he was for the position he is with very little backlift as well. First time we've corner. ever seen him at left back as well. He's played there for uh, Wolves, I suppose. So I mean, for us. That. Yeah, it's true, but um, maybe it's something we should have been considered in the recent weeks because Emerson's not been great there. Skip obviously started there today. I thought he was decent. I thought um, Skip looked good today. Yeah. I thought he was all right. I, I thought they were targeting him on his side. I thought they were getting him on, um, down their side a few times, to be honest. Um, so I, d I don't think defensively had a great game, but I thought on the ball he was a lot better than what Emerson showed. So that was decent. Um, but yeah, Van der Ven was my man of the match, I thought. Again, you know, he sweeps up so much. And when he moved over to left back, he was getting to the pylon line a few times, put some good balls in the box, um, and obviously got his goal. And what a brilliantly taken goal. And he's getting quite a repertoire of uh, good goals now in the Tom show. His goal against Forrest is brilliant, top bins. He's got some top one, notch finishing, man. He's finishing like a striker at the moment. He's got and some I, quality. And I swear to you as well, Pedro Porro, as much as I thought, you know, he should have done better for the goal that we did concede, I thought throughout the game, uh, particularly in the second half where he massively grew into the game. I thought he looked really good. He had some nice twists and turns on him, defending well, um, much better attacking display than what we have seen in previous weeks as well, where I've been quite critical of him. And again, against Burnley at home this season, he scores a peach of a goal. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic goal. Uh, battered it into the near post. It felt like he was sick of just trying to get crosses in because all of them were just so easily defended. So he's like, you know what, I'm just going to batter this yeah. into the near post. And it was a brilliant finish and we know what quality he's got. We know he's capable of so much better, so much more um, going forward. 
and that was another uh, more evidence of that. Um, is that Sonny somewhere? Is that Sonny somewhere? Or is Emerson? Um, but look, uh, in terms of uh, look, we can't really learn too much. I feel like from this game specifically, but uh, in terms of the season, obviously this, this should really wrap up the Europa League. We only need one point um, of, of from the next two games because. You, if you do, to be fair, if Newcastle do win both their last two games and we lose, they do have a better goal difference, so it's not completely done, we just need a point. But Europa League football is um, satisfactory, I'd say, after Andrew's first season. It's probably what we would have wanted uh, at the beginning of the season. I think we've done quite well to get there. I think he'll be annoyed and a bit concerned about the late season collapse, um, how it's happened, but... We would have taken fifth at the beginning of the season. Looks like that's what we'll be getting at the end of the season. So yeah, it's just a shame. It's positive. It's just a shame how the season did pan out in the end because you would prefer to start the season slow and end the season strong instead of doing it the other way around. Um, and it is a bit worrying why that has happened and why these the wheels have just seemed to completely have fallen off. Especially as we've get, got like all the excuses ran out. We got our players back. and We seem to get worse. That's just that's the worrying out, yeah. thing. That's the worrying thing for me. But. I think when you look at the whole season objectively, it has been a good season. I think we would have liked bigger runs in the Cups, but to finish fifth, um, I think it's a really good season. First year under Ange, Harry Kane leaving the club, brand new squad uh, and everything like that. So I think you've got to be proud of the team of how we handled it uh, throughout this way with a brand new style of football. And if Villa do lose on, um, Monday, if Villa, if Villa do lose on Monday night, you never know, it's four points. Um, we have to obviously get something out of City. And then you take it to the last day, and then they got Palace away, and we got Sheffield. So you never know what's going to happen on the last day, uh, being ordered out here. But, yeah, um, we've been ordered out. By the way, we are here. We were just on the pitch because of the players' lap of honour, and um, it's just finished. All the players are off the pitch now, but we have been kicked out the stadium. Yeah, West Ham. Disgrace. Yes. <laughs> no, so look, we'll see what happens with Villa. Obviously, wait we'll see what happens with Arsenal as well. See if we even want to win in the city, but. Um, Hopefully, United um, you know, can get them to do a job on that game. But you never know if we, if we do lose, and then we'll see what happens against City. You never know what's going to happen in terms of top four. I'm sure the players won't have given up just yet. But um, it wasn't. I don't think today was performance that told me we we're going to get anything from City. So. No, I mean, look, I don't like you said before. I don't think you can. There are any specific or um, key takeaways from this game? I think. The main thing today was just to get three points on the board after the four games that we've just been through, four losses on the bounce, first time since, what, 2004 or something. We just had to stop the rot. We had to get a good feeling back and we had to, you know, finish the season in somewhat of a positive manner. And so hopefully next season now, um, with the Open League football coming, hopefully we get the change that we need that Andrew's calling for. Hopefully we have a big summer ahead. I think the club is moving in a positive direction. I think everything is positive. The late season collapse is a bit of a concern, but I don't think that will. That uh, hopefully they don't take that that into next season. They don't um, kind of concentrate on that. Let's concentrate on the football we know we're capable of. Let's concentrate on the, on the manager that we do have, the football that he wants to play, and hopefully we're bringing players that can kind of play that way of playing. And I'm sure this team will, will improve and hopefully start flying again. And that's what all we can hope for. And look, it was a decent first season for Andrew. Let's hope for a big second season for him. So safe to say you're hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Um, yeah, absolutely. I just really, I really, we just have to get the change that we need this summer and not just a few players. We need to go all the way. I know maybe it will take a couple of windows and a couple of years to do it, but I want to see a team that's competitive next season. And I think the aims for next season has got to be consolidating our place in the top four. Yeah, I think so. I think Andrew will be looking at bigger things, but yeah. Oh, look, I think but if that happens, I think you've got to say and, that's and a good also, uh, if, look, if we can get top four and you know maybe go far in the Europa League, you know, and one of the cups, maybe win a cup, I think we'll all take that. Yeah, it's just a weird feeling around the stadium today because it's it, with the lap of honour and everything. And apparently, Mickey Van der Ven won Player of the Year, which I think is deserved. Uh, we did say Son in the preview, so we said it between Son, Romero, Mickey Van der Ven. Mickey Van der Ven was the one. That took it away probably for the more consistent performers. Uh, but it is a weird feeling around the stadium today because we do still have one more home game, sure. but all those things were happening today. So I've never seen that before. It's just strange. Maybe they're worried that if we beat City, <laughs> everyone's going to boo. Um, <laughs> so they thought, you know what, get out of the way today. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, it is a bit of a strange one. That's never happened in the, in the second last home game of the season. So um, I think this was due to be board. the last one, though, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's true. So. I think everyone's still pretty happy. The atmosphere in the stadium is still pretty positive. I don't think anyone's turning on Ange just yet. But it will be interesting if 
we do spend a lot of money and, 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 we, and we start the season in a similar fashion to how we ended it, that would be an interesting prospect, what, what, how fans would react to that. But I'm still pretty positive where we're heading. And look, good end, good, well, we haven't ended the season yet, but good win. And hopefully, feels like it, though. It does feel good. <laughs> I, mean, I feel, feel like we finished fifth, but we we'll probably have anyway. But we'll see what happens with the uh, Bands over to Villa on Monday. We'll see what happens. All right. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.